welcome everybody to the October 16, 2018 meeting of the Village of Rhinebeck Planning Board. First item on the agenda is the uh, Rhinebeck Yoga Center, 6400 Montgomery Street, 3rd floor. Come on up. Signs available, seven square feet, and you're using six. Says yoga center. Hanging from an existing bracket? Yep. And the background is white, right? The back background's white. Yeah. That's good. Because yeah. people it's a wood sign. if you get a cream or another background, it doesn't it doesn't work as well for the sign. Is that no, no. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. I always advise people not to use white white because so. it tends to look um, like paper. Oh, so, it also yeah. gets dirty. Yeah. So, so anyway, it's like the cream better. Yeah, a little, a little cream or something is better than white. Usually, I mean, it's even better to have dark background, light lettering. But yeah. if you want to do that, I would just advise you to use a sort of a creamy white rather than a white white, because it ends up looking like a temporary sign rather than a permanent sign. Yeah, I was white. wondering if it might get dirty easier too. Well, <laughs> on, on the main road in terms of. So where is this hanging? Because there's an existing Pilates sign. Yeah. And then so, Zimmer has a sign not that far down the there's, road. There's like a window there that has two banners inside. Right. So the Pilates is on the left and mine would be on the right. On the right, okay, yeah. inside. Of it. So it's not going to block Zimmer's sign. No. <clears throat> no lighting? No lighting. It's already pretty bright with right. no panels. I'll make a motion to approve the sign. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Simple enough. <laughs> Looks good. That's it. That's it. Thank we just need a, we need a picture of it up once it's up. Okay. To the clerk. Uh -huh. So go in the folder. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much. Second item on the agenda is Jeffrey and Nancy Main, 108 East Market Street, site plan. <coughs> two variances, two side yard variances, and they asked you to move it to five feet, house five feet from the property line? Or five feet from the property line. Five feet, six and a quarter inches? Well, five feet. Five feet. That's the closest point. Okay. And then the garage is uh, two. The garage, we're, we propose to move back on the property, but not move it further from the property line. So it's going to be the same. Right. But just move it, move it back further on the road. And they approved that. Yes. Yeah, the five foot six is from the is from the front property line, maybe. and the side property line is five feet. Okay. okay yes. And the, the five foot six is what the existing is where the existing house sits. Since you're on film, maybe you should be on this side. So camera, that? Since you're on film, maybe you should move to this side so the camera oh. can pick it up. This side, sure. If that's your best side. Is it my best side? Okay. That's what I <clears throat> it, it, it looks nice. Well, our well, question we had yesterday yes. talking about this was, what is going to be, how is this going to be done? Um, what's going to be saved? What's going to be original? How will you move it? Um, well, we obviously have to evaluate um, how feasible it is to, to lift it as a structure and move it versus disassemble it and re-erect it, which is often done with old buildings that are salvaged and reused. Um, and it's going to really depend on the integrity of the connections and what extent the wood is rotted versus, you know, or can be can be braced with diagonals and picked up and moved. I mean, we're really going to have to kind of feel our way, but the intent is, as we've said before, to um, salvage and reuse the front part of the structure. We so, are we are um, lifting it up to get it higher. It's down in the ground now, right. uh, so it's going to be foundation. Um, but so we're, we're assuming we're going to replace the sills at the very least, um, you know. But that's that's the plan. 
So you're going to reuse the 12 by 12 windows on the front side and front and we're going to use them also um, closer in front of us on the sides. Right. Good. Everywhere we have them, we're bringing them up to where they're more visible. And if you take off the cedar shakes and the siding, the siding is itself, salvageable, we'll absolutely use it. Right. Use sure. it on the front. That would be nice. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the question is, with the siding, it's not just the condition, but how easily it comes off, having right. been now installed at least twice, initially, you know, nailed and then nailed again, without right. splitting. And, and sometimes the old wood dries out and it, you know, it breaks, but we're going to yeah. do our best. But the quality of it is The quality is better than what is available safety. now. That's exactly right. So. The stoop here, the, the front stoop. Yes. If you have five foot six, are you going to have space for? Just barely. You know, yeah. The uh, steps are going to go, come right out onto the. I mean, here it shows right, the yeah, sidewalk yeah. in front right. of the stoop, right? Yeah. The, the sidewalk is a, is further in front of the stoop. I mean, if you can see the relationship, the sidewalk is the, the, the furthest line to the top is this edge of the street. Right, I'm just looking at the pictures. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, of, uh, yeah, right. Your, your picture shows a, sec a section of sidewalk in front of, the, in front of the steps. Right. But that's not going to, in reality, be there. Well, if you look at the site plan, it, there is actually space from the front of the steps right. to the edge right. of the sidewalk. There's a property line which runs between the front of the steps and the sidewalk. Okay. And there is, you know, maybe two and a half, three feet. Oh, okay. Because the renderings are generated on the same information that the site plan has. We're looking at a metal roof. All right. Don't, well, we're showing a metal roof, and I think that's the preference of the clients. But a lot of times, that's sacrificed when you know budget numbers get crunched. I'm sure the original was a cedar shaped roof, and those right. are also expensive and, and not the last. So. Right. So it's not likely that it will be a metal roof? The, the preference is a metal roof. It's really going to depend where the numbers come in. Okay. But it's going to be wood siding one way or the other. It will be wood siding. Right. Looks good. It's a good design. It works. Do you need a railing for the, uh, for the stoop? Uh, I, I thought so, but interestingly, the code changes that all the time, and with the number of steps, I think we actually don't. I, I would want one there, but, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't know, it looks bare without one. A little bit, right. Yeah. At least on the sides, if right. you could put like a three, three foot. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I agree with you on that. I've seen lots of houses that don't have you know, with the, the height of it. Yeah, the interesting thing is, you know, for guardrails, um, the code says that it's 30 inches or more above grade, you need that. Well, you can obviously fall off something shorter than 30 inches and possibly break your neck, but that's the way the code is written, and it changes yeah. from time to time. So. Well, I'll take a look at examples, historic 18, 20 examples, and see what you come up with in terms of railings or no railings. Sure. My I, tendency I, is, is to think that there should be railings, but... What, what book is that? I have a book here, Lost Examples of Colonial Architecture, that I would like to give to the Maines, which is basically dozens and dozens of houses that... And the other thing I thought of you was a month ago, I was upstate at that mm -hmm. uh, salvage yard, and it's, okay. it's filled with stuff that I thought was appropriate for your house. Okay. Where is the salvage yard? Where? Uh, that's in Fort Plain up in the Mohawk Valley. It's a okay. Okay. huge factory building just filled with old architectural yeah, salvage. Yeah. Okay. I think there's one in Albany, too. Yeah, yeah. one in Albany, one, one, one in Troy. Yeah. Yeah. Danbury or, or outside of Danbury? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So because we've had some letters coming in, it's a, it's a different design than was originally proposed. We felt there has to be a public hearing on election day. Um, and with some comments, we have, I think, three letters so far. Um, once the public announcement is coming, we'll get some more letters. But we have to have public input sure. on, on, the, on the 6th of uh, November. Sure. If that's convenient for you. Yes. Yeah. Just vote early. <laughs> It looks good. Looks yeah. very good. Yeah. Good job. Great. Anybody have any more questions? Mm -hmm. No, it looks good. All right, so Ryan will send out the notices for the public hearing, and we will see you.
on the actual day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Apologize to the lady. That's okay. Second of the list. Were there any other? Yeah, that's too Warren had to drop yeah. his two names. Yeah. Right. Thank you. As always. Thank you, Thank you Warren. Yeah. I'm going to be on for the next item because I just uh, posted this up the board, which I can give you. Okay. 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 Uh, next item on the agenda is an amalgamated agricultural associates LLC proposed uh, farm market options for Mayor's Farm. Christian Padre. I'm the engineer for the applicant. Uh, while we're waiting for Warren to get back, I can uh, get started with uh, just an outline of the modifications to the site plan from the previous meeting. Um, those modifications are all detailed in our letter dated uh, September 28, uh, 2018. Um, so the easiest thing is like to just run through that letter quickly. Um, the site entrance from Route 9 has been modified. Uh, the planning board had some concerns with the size of the, uh, the radius of the curbs uh, going into, that, uh, into the site from Route 9. We've reduced them from 33 feet to 25 feet. The DOT uh, has preferred radius of 25 feet for this. Um, so they weren't, they weren't very open to, to reducing it any more than that. Um, but it has been significantly reduced from the 33 feet. Um, and I've also shown site distance uh, measurements and the site triangles on sheet C2 of the, of the plan set, um, both in the north and south direction. Um, and there's adequate uh, site distance in both directions. I show a 30, foot, a 30 mile per hour zone uh, for the approach from the north from the village side. Um, that whole zone is 30 miles per hour. Um, from the approaching the site from the south, uh, since since prior to the site, it does transition from 40 miles an hour to 30 to 30 miles an hour at the site. Uh, by the time you get to the site, you are at 30 miles an hour. I used the uh, 40 mile per hour per zone, uh, 40 mile per hour uh, zone site distance regulations uh, for the south, and that's all detailed on the plan. Um, there's a site circulation plan shown also on C2, showing a 30-foot box truck uh, accessing the site from Route 9 um, and maneuvering through the parking lot and backing up to the loading aisle. I know that there were concerns with uh, uh, any delivery trucks blocking the entrance from Mill Street. I was just trying to demonstrate that uh, a, a, a box truck making deliveries from Route 9 can actually back up into that loading area without either blocking the, uh, the access from Mill Street and without having to even maneuver anywhere on Mill Street um, to get to that loading area. But um, you can't do that if there's cars in those two parking spaces. Right. So the, the intent is to have um, deliveries take place outside of peak hours that they're probably going to be happening first thing in the morning. Um, and if there are cars in that parking lot. There's plenty of room for the truck to to pull through to Mill Street and then back up. Um, so it, we're not really sure where the uh, the box truck is, is going to be um, delivering from, either from Mill Street or Route 9. Um, but I just wanted to show you it, it was possible for a 30-foot box truck, which is fairly large, I think it's larger than what they're anticipating to, to make deliveries, um, to actually maneuver in this site. Now, now Christian, mm -hmm. um, so you have you contacted the DOT? Yeah, I met with um, Walter out there. All right, because there's... Chuck, Chuck, I mean, Chuck Walter. Yeah, so Chuck, because I talked to Chuck, 
earlier today, mm -hmm. and he wanted us to forward your um, study to Evelisi Pacheco. Familiar with him? I guess he's out of the Poughkeepsie um, Burnett Boulevard location. And so I, apparently he's the DOT engineer that does or basically signs off on traffic studies. Um, and I have, I have his email. So what I'll do is I'll give that to you and then you can just kind of forward it to him, uh, at least for comment. And it's, it's I-V-E-L-I-S-S-E dot P-A-C-H-E-C-O at D-O-T dot New York dot gov. And just forward him your study because he wants to basically take a look at it because they're concerned about that um, that one intersection where there's going to be a new development into the town and it comes out onto nine where mill is and so there's going to be a heavier traffic flow are you talking about the the grass okay so yeah i talked about that with chuck i was because you guys had brought that up to, to look at that traffic study we didn't do a traffic study for this we we looked at ite numbers um and we did the site distance measurements um and all of that so the, uh, I did bring it up to Chuck, though, about the Grasmere's you guys have recommended, and he wasn't familiar with any study that had been done. So that, I'm thinking that maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe okay. he talked to him. Okay. Um, so I can do that. Yeah. So we just need to get some type of comment, um, hopefully prior to a, uh, the public hearing. The information that we did regarding, that, that we did collect regarding uh, traffic generation was that this site really isn't going to be generating anything significant. Um, you know, Seeker uses a threshold of 100 trips per hour as being a significant impact, as having, potentially having a significant impact on a road. Um, we had a conservative estimate of around 21 trips per hour during the peak hour. Um, I do want to make a correction. I can make a correction right into when we resubmit. Uh, my letter referenced the 10th edition of the ITE. Um, and I indicated that there was no information regard, with regard to farmers markets in that 10th edition. I was referencing the 9th edition. The newest edition is the 10th edition, which just came out, um, does actually have one section on farmers markets. Um, I looked at that section as well. The two studies that they did um, were based on large scale farm markets in like a town center setting where they would have multiple vendors, up to 90 vendors. One of the studies was. Um, and you know, happened on a Sunday afternoon and the whole street was shut down, that type of farm market. So it wasn't really applicable. Um, the, so the numbers that we used were based on other uh, research papers that recommended um, using either a variety store or a, um, a, a nursery, a warehouse nursery that would be more similar to a, a farmer's market. Um, and that's what we used. So you're playing with, with the truck backing into the loading dock, mm -hmm. it would then be able to go straight ahead out onto Route 9, not have to go onto Mill mm -hmm. when it leaves. I tend to think that um, they'll tend to, to pull out onto Mill and back into the loading area rather than do parallel with the loading area. Uh, unless they're told or it's striped in some way to make sure that this is the loading area. And you can you can do that. I did run that route as well. Um, and you can do that without, and, and still have enough room to get one car by and Mill Street. Um, I can't really move the, the entrance any further south because there's a utility pole there. Right. Um, and, I, and moving it further north doesn't really help that situation. So I was trying to minimize the impact to the existing access. Um, so, so like you said, that, that situation would work, but they, could, they may partially block this, this entrance. The 30 foot would go to about here. Um, I mean, you could still fit a vehicle there. I can show that if you want to. Um, yeah. I mean, how close, how close to the actual loading dock do they have to get? They're going to be, as of now, they're actually going to be hand carrying things over to um, either into this door right here, that there's going to be a new, there's a proposed door in the rear, um, or to the existing double door in the, in the rear. So, I mean, they don't have to be, 
So you're perpendicular to the load, like not backing into it. It can, it can be either, what I'm showing is that it's basically, it's, it's not perpendicular to it, um, but you could, they could have that situation also, so. Yeah, it, the way this is, where the vehicle's parked here, it, it creates sort of a blind spot coming in from Mill Street around that corner into the parking lot, you know. Um, but if you, if you do a 30-foot truck going perpendicular to the loading area and still have room to open up the truck and get out in the back, you're sticking out almost into the street. Right. So not, not into the street, but into that access. You, yeah. And I think we, we want to discourage the truck traffic on Mill Street. Well, Which is what I was trying to demonstrate, that right. we, could, we could actually maneuver the site without having to, to right. go onto Mill Street. Well, once your vendors are told, this is where we want you to park, it's just that... You know, <clears throat> I thought about removing this last space here mm -hmm. and instead, say, putting it over here. That's, you know, and that way you could pull, that would create more room right here so that you're not blocking half I, the I aisle. I have the same thought, yeah. And so that way they could pull mm -hmm. directly into the loading area and they wouldn't, there would be more sort of we, sight distance around this corner. We would have to move this all further out to actually add another space. Um, well, not really. I, I sketched it on my plan, but there's, there's no... To have one, like, just an angled lot? Uh, no, it's just lot. one parallel right here. And I showed it, measured it out. Anyway, I think you could do that. Uh, and that could be, your, like, your employee spot or whatever. Uh, and that just seems to me it would remove this bottleneck at the corner and allow this person, the truck to pull in would, here. Yeah, it would certainly make uh, And allow two lanes here. open. Right. So I would take a look at that. Even if you have to move the dumpster, you know, a couple yeah. of feet that way. <clears throat> I have a I have serious concerns about two-way traffic in and out of the back. Not because of the traffic right there, but because of the two out of the three nearest intersections that allow you to get back out of there at um, the south end of Mill Street and then I guess the north end of Mill Street. Both of those are, are really awkward angles and if we had an increase of traffic of people <laughs> going out the back and then trying to get it back on, not on Route 9 where you don't have a, a 90 degree angle with clear sight lines, I've been at both of those, and I really don't think it's safe to be looking back like this. I would prefer that we just either eliminate Mill Street or have it so it's just coming in. So you're not having people down here and then up past Melly's Law Office because I just look at that as a severe safety concern. I, I wouldn't want traffic that started here to be in an accident. You're concerned with the Mill Street and Route 9 intersections? Yeah. yeah, but the only thing is you can't, um, that's a public street. So, I mean, right now the planning board has the authority to make suggestions to the site, but the actual street itself has to not be. Not make the street one way. I'm sorry? Not make, you don't want to make the street one way. You no, just it's just, just the direction of flow of traffic. Yes. Yeah. He's just saying that you shouldn't be able to exit out on the Mill Street from the parking lot. Right. I don't mind coming in as much. I mean, if, if I lived in that neighborhood and I saw it, what the increase in Garden Street has done to my street, um, I don't want the neighbors over there being subjected to the same kind of things. And I don't want anybody who's unfamiliar with the area, they, they may have come in on Route 9 and they see a back street, next thing you know there's an accident down here or way up past Melly's office. Because those are problematic intersections, and I avoid them because I'm getting older and I can't stretch my neck and I can't see. And David has said the same thing. He only goes there with his wife because he needs a co-pilot to get out on Route Nine. Line. It's very hard to head south from either the this the about nine mill or down you know below. Really hard to cross double lanes and head south. It's uh, because nobody it says thirty. But they're they're not doing they're not doing thirty. Which I would think would be an argument to keep that Mill Street access open, so people can exit out of Route Nine, uh, exit onto Route Nine from the site. Um, but if they don't need to go to Route Nine, and, and someone is off of Mill Street, then to they can go back to Parsonage right. and out that way. Yeah. The, the, the new intersection is the safest one because it's actually, you know. And also so by doing that, you would, you would lessen the impact on the residential. Component I, I, of the I disagree because if you 
flows, if you make Mill Street one way, all I'm that- I'm gonna make Mill no, Street no, I'm sorry, if you make the entrance onto Mill Street one way, all you're doing is routing all of that neighborhood traffic for people going to Parsonage, either they have to go around and make that really tight, sharp turn to get back to Mill Street to go to the neighborhood. So they're gonna go there either way, you're just sending them out into a more dangerous situation onto Route 9, then stopping to make a very, very sharp right turn to head back onto Mill Street rather than just exiting safely on Zillow Street. So if they live in that neighborhood right there. Right, I mean, I don't think anyone that doesn't live in that neighborhood is going to use, to go yeah, no, there. People, I yes. don't think anybody, may, not many people are going to come out of this parking lot to go over here and take right. a left, right. which right. is take the most difficult right. thing right. to do. Right. They will come out this way to take a left. Right. So I tend to, Avoid one-way streets or one-way entrances unless it's absolutely necessary. I think having multiple ways of getting in and out of a site is a good thing, generally speaking. And it would be different if this was, you know, Adams or some gigantic traffic generator. But the, uh, the, the traffic generation out of this is not going to be so significant that <clears throat> that I think it's going to be tempting for anybody to come out of the back way in order to get back on the nine up here or over here. No. And if they're doing it here, it would be to head south rather than to come back. No, the only, the only thing is people will come out here to, to, go to avoid, to, right, go to Parsons and avoid Route 9 altogether. Route 9 altogether. Yeah, that, that's... But, but more likely it's going to be people who live along Parsonage or the neighborhoods along Parsonage. No, I, don't, I, I disagree. I think it's going to be people that live elsewhere in the village or live yeah. east of the village are going to... If they're gonna gonna go here, they're gonna go out that way, because that's the way to avoid the light in the middle of town. Well, yeah, but a lot of those but people it, are people who live in the village too, who go okay. those ways. But, but again, it dumps it dumps more traffic onto that residential. But not area. a significant amount of traffic is what I'm suggesting. Oh, I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure that that you know. I'm not saying it's significant, and also I think they're gonna go that way anyways. I live in that neighborhood, so I would have to come out to Route mm -hmm. Nine make a sharp right, head right back in, and I, I think that's a less safe situation because now I'm, I'm slowing down at that intersection in order to make a very sharp turn. But yeah. I tend to agree that we should have a two-way entrance and, and uh, you know, people who live in the village use the village streets in order to get to the back ways to places. Everybody knows yes. how to do all the back roads. That's part of living in the village. It's part of a grid system that distributes traffic rather than funnels it all onto one street. That's what you're supposed to do. But when you're putting a commercial use in a residential area, then, then I think you want to minimize the impact on the residential it's, area. It's a permitted use. It's an agricultural use. <laughs> Just so... I think we, we fought that battle of loss. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a... It's a commercial agricultural use. So, yes. which is an increase in intensification. Which is an increase of, of intensity. Um. I, there, there are 18 spots in your parking lot, and I'm concerned about Mill Street. Is 18 spots enough, including the employees? I don't know how many employees you're planning on having. It, it and makes the code it's sufficient. Because uh, there's the idea of, of no parking on Mill, which we're going to have to circulate. We have to, we have to circulate that. No, we have, we have to, to circulate about that. And we need the village board to get in on that to, you know, maybe no parking from here up or something, but not all the way down. I don't know how many neighbors would have people coming. A lot of people on Mill have long driveways and large parking areas. I don't know how many do not, how many would have a problem with no parking. Or we get permit parking like we have on Livingston. Um, Right, we said we would not object to such an application. We just ask that it not be connected to this necessarily because we can't control how, how quickly the village board takes that up or takes it up at all since it's legislative. My two agencies want to comment on this proposal and it's the police department and the fire department. They want to take a look at the site plan and make comment before the public hearing. And we need DOT and uh, Board of Health. Do we have Board of Health clearance on this? Except the new septic system, the leach fields? Right. The, we haven't had that approval yet, but that's pending. So okay. they, they witnessed the soil tests, and the soils were great. There's no reason that they wouldn't approve. So, so what, what's the capacity? How many people can you have in the building at one time? Do you have a capacity number? Uh, 
Um, that, I guess, will be determined in conjunction with the building inspector. Can we, can we figure that out? Because I guess the other, the other question I have is, is with parking, that, that's presuming that you're not going to have any events, that it's just going to be a um, straight agricultural retail operation or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the occupancy, I'd have to calculate off of the floor plan and take a look at it and see how the interior is designed with the fixed seating or... There are three tables and 12 chairs now in the design. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of, well, let's clear up the space the and, festival. and let's have, a, have, you know, a wine and cheese gathering for, for 50 people. Um, That's not it, something that we've anticipated? Well, I, I, and again, it, it, it's not just you, it's uh, whoever occupies this structure afterwards. Right. So, so, so we've, we've given you a parking plan that complies with the newly adopted village standards. So I assume the village took into consideration uh, the size of a building and the square footage when it came up with the new standards. So we've given you something that complies in all respects with your zoning. So I don't well, want to start all hypothetical situations because you know, what if there's a parade there? Or <laughs> I mean, we can come up with all sorts of that's true. We can situation. Yeah, the calculations are already here. Um, Christian already formulated it. We have one more than what's required currently. The minimum amount that's required. Correct. Right. One, one more than the minimum. Right, but we can require more than the minimum amount. It's a range. It's one more than the maximum on the minimum range? Yeah. Spaces required are 17, provided yeah, range. Seeing a range yeah. Space um, yeah, there's split use, so retail use and the restaurant use for the just outdoor seating and indoor seating. And you've had here. So we've actually doubled. Right, your, your new standard is one per four indoor seating. So, so that's the, not a range. So the retail, that's the parking for the retail use part, you have the retail. consideration the entire building. And then on top of that, since there's going to be some outdoor seating, we we use the restaurant code. So there's, if it was just retail, there's adequate spacing. And then on top of that, uh, to take into account the, the extra spaces for the, the tables and chairs, we added the, the restaurant calculation also. Because no, no sane person is going to park on Route 9, and <clears throat> if, they, if the parking lot fills, they will want to park on Mill. Yeah, I mean, we, we live in a small village. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the few uses, I would say, that's new that actually is going to have the minimum amount of parking for the use. We have lots of restaurants and other things in the village that can't provide any parking. So I, I understand the concern about parking, but this is better than most situations. The lower part of the range. The um, agricultural use property, that's not going to be pick your own pumpkins or pick your own strawberries. It's going to be um, farmed by the, 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 you know, the family, whatever. The, the plan is to continue having it farmed as is. Um, you know, in the future, if they want to have a, a pumpkin patch, they, they could do that. But it's not in the plans at this point. Okay, no, I was just thinking, you know, of the number of cars. Right, you know, right, that would be a big draw. I mean, so that's not in the thought. Right. So they, yeah. Yeah. They, they may start, right now it's planted yes. with, um, Count. I think it's barley. Okay. Okay. And right. if the farm market yeah. opens, they may start planting yeah. some, you know, tomatoes or other things mm -hmm. that could be sold at the market. Right. Right. I don't think it's going to be anything about it. Take your own kind of thing. That's what they're showing in the park. Uh, one thing I had asked for last time was that the south porch, which is only five feet wide and has two doors open out into it, that, that could be widened and uh, the, um, the aisle space could be narrowed. So we kept the aisle space 28 feet instead of the minimum point four just to help with maneuverability, right? Um, the Can you either put the doors going in. We got in. rid of one of the doors. Um, you said, you know, we put a window in there, we put a window in. So one door went away, and the other door, which is to the back, 
existing door is really just an exit door. It's not, I mean, for it's exit from the storage area. It's not for the retail area. So it's not like the door is going to be swinging out as people are walking by. Uh, I think we felt that it was more important to have maneuvering space in the parking lot, and the um, we don't want people like putting tables and chairs out under there because they're out front in the picnic area. So I think on balance, we felt that it was going to work better um, the way it is rather than encouraging a side porch. We're not going to have fruit or vegetable display in the side porch either because the front is where right. the windows are where you can control it from inside. Um, so that seemed to be the important porch to have deeper um, rather than adding a couple of feet to the side porch. But that's, I, I don't know if Christian made any other changes. Well, as long as the doors don't come out into it. Yeah, we got, but I said we got rid of the, um, the door at the front and put a window in, which is one of your thoughts. Right. Put it here for a minute, Christian. Mm -hmm. So here we just put in a, a window. I see the other one that's in the front. You get more visibility. And this is just an exit door uh, to the back. So it's really not, it's uh, like an emergency exit. It's not a kind of regular So people aren't going to go up to that door from the parking lot to try to get in? No, there's not a handle on it. <laughs> it's just a push, push out door. Okay. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you want people to come to the front door. That's the whole, the whole point exactly, of having yeah. a walkway and, and uh, so forth. Uh, the only other change here is we've, we've called details on the recessed lighting uh, in the porch roof. And we, at the request of, uh, I think your consulting attorney, we're showing a basement plan, just showing the storage down there. There's no um, developed use of anything else down there. And the bathroom is handicap accessible. Yes, it, it looks tiny. Yeah. It's good. Okay. The other thing that I suggested, <clears throat> and I, I haven't seen it on here, I don't think, is that since the use was tied to the idea of it's a working farm parcel <clears throat> in the agricultural district, can we put in there some sort of um, requirement that the farm portion of the property maintains as an active farm use that would be connected to the retail use in here, meaning um, growing something that would be actually sold on the property. Right. Well, I think Victoria was just addressing that. I, that sounds more like a, a legal question to me. Right. <laughs> so so uh, you'll see in the letter that you received from Ag Markets back in July, it's actually permissible to just operate a farm market on a parcel in the Ag District without any adjacent agricultural use. Um, should the app, should the landowner convert any of that land to a non-agricultural use, there's all sorts of clawback provisions and we'd probably lose the agricultural district status. <coughs> um, I don't know if they want to be tied to keeping it in operation, but uh, to, to do anything else would negate the ag district status that it has. Yeah, but I, <coughs> I know that's the opinion of the ag, agricultural department, but the opinion of the zoning in the village of Rhinebeck says that the only way that this has happened is if it's tied to a agricultural use. You mean, so, well, it's, it's one big lot. I know, that's the right. point. So the point is, are, are you going to be using that for agricultural uses that can be tied directly? Are you going to do all your work up in Tivoli or some other remote location and put it in here for sale? So, so right now the field is planted with barley. Right. And there's not a huge market for barley <laughs> in the farm market. No, right, exactly. Well, I'm suggesting that wouldn't it be nice if this grew vegetables? Kale. Uh, that would be sold on site, and that way you would identify the use of the farm right. market with the use of the parcel in I think the village. We can grow some of it on site, but as you know, there's no greenhouses here, and if we put up greenhouse structures, I think right. you'd start getting an outcry. Uh, the, the farm in Tivoli does have the greenhouse structures, which okay gives us the year round vegetables. So, you know, we need to talk to the farmer. There's a program that they have in order to get all the vegetables growing at the right times in order to supply the farm right. market. Anything grown on this site would just be extra because of it's it's small lot relatively I, I, speaking um, it would be i'm just suggesting i mean if you make that I'm, if you made that, that we have the right to re to uh, require a note on the plan that that be used for agricultural uses that's tied to the so instead of growing for, for, for years a portion of that lot was corn or potatoes or right. potatoes yeah, right. <laughs> So, I mean, if you, if you made that a condition of your approval, then we would consider it and decide whether you know, yeah. we wanted to accept it or not. But 
Well, think about it because I think that's some, something that I, I see as being uh, integral to the way this is justified in terms of our zoning. And so if there was, if, if you could say that this parcel is going to be used for farm purposes, it's not going to be subdivided or, you know, um, lie fallow or <clears throat> used for some crop that's going to be sold under the general market somewhere, who knows where. Um, even if it can be said that, well, it's growing barley that's used as feedstock for the stuff that's used on the parcel, I don't know. I mean, the I'm initial argument that came in here was that that parcel was growing was things critical. to be sold. Right. Well, it is. I mean, it's part of the farm complex. Right. All I'm saying is that the farm complex has, there's lots of, of timing issues that go into growing crops. And so if this is being used for barley, the tomatoes are coming from the greenhouse. They're all part of, of a farm. But I, right. I understand what you're saying. You will take it under advisement. Think about it. From an advertising aspect for your client, just to have things that are grown right next to it, people driving by would see this and then, oh, there's there, and go in there and buy them. Fresh corn. Right from the site, you know? Or yeah. whatever. Even if it's trucked in. The yeah. perception that it's, it's... Or if 90% of it's trucked in. Right. right. Okay, so <clears throat> I understand your point. I will, okay. I will bring it up with them. I think, you know, I think they'll be happy to plant whatever you guys have to plant at this point. So, John, what, what approvals do we need? Waiting for the set, yeah, um, Board of Health. You're getting village water? Um, yes. And you want fire, police, and DOT? Well, the, the, right, so the two agencies that are familiar with the project uh, want a uh, PDF version so they can review it strictly with uh, traffic flow and fire uh, apparatus access. Um, so at some point I'm going to have to circulate that to them this week so they can make a comment prior to the public hearing. DOT, Chuck Walter, I spoke with him. Um, he's familiar with the project. He just wants the plan sent to um, the field engineer that specifically is what? Pacheco. Yeah, um, Pacheco, he's in Poughkeepsie, so I have to basically send him um, a version of the plan so he can make comment. Um, one other point I had in my notes. Um, in the previous site plans, we had four trees across the front. They've been reduced to three. They're a larger variety of trees, which is good, I think. Um, but I was hoping to get another tree put back in the middle. The two trees in front of the building are 95 feet apart, which is a lot longer than normal street tree distance. So if we could put another tree closer to the sidewalk, sort of at the midpoint, so that you'd have three trees across the front edge of the building and one on the other side of the driveway, I think it would be sort of more of a street tree effect as you go down the road. Yeah, the intent was to try to avoid blocking the building, obviously, with the construction that we were showing. And we've added a good amount of lower landscaping along the sidewalk and towards the, the, the approach to the building. Um, I hear what you're saying, uh, but that was the that was I know. intent. <laughs> I, I can understand why, but the, you know, a tall tree, not a dogwood, but now a red oak is going to grow up and not block block it, you're going to be able to see right underneath it. That's the way street trees work. So I think if you plant decent sized trees, you, you won't have any trouble blocking your site distance. Or your sides or your porch. I think it, it, you're coming into the village, it'll help slow down traffic if it has a cadence like street trees, rather than having 90 something feet apart, which is more like landscaping on the corners of your lot rather than so along the front edge. Oh. One issue that, that's not part of this, we've taken out the signage for now and we'll be returning for approval of the signage at a later date. Um, but the only sign that they're going to, they're going to have a sign on the building and I think there was some sensitivity about putting a tree uh, where it would block the sign on the building as well. Yeah, did, you, did you talk to where you think that these trees are so high? Right, there's adding an additional one right there. Yeah. So there's just one, two, three, four, you know, it sort of has a cadence to it, so it feels like street trees rather than, <coughs> you know, corner landscaping. And, um, and I, I know you're going to put signs on the building. Mm -hmm. 
but you also had a, a freestanding uh, sign. We're, right. the, we're going to be reusing the freestanding sign as well. Sign's out on the road. So you're saying you, you'd like it near the sidewalk? Yeah, like near the sidewalk entrance. Yes. You know, sort of halfway between the trees yeah. on the ends of the buildings. So then you would tree, have a tree essentially 50, 55 feet apart. So that would, that's, that's still pretty generous distances for a village, which usually have 30 to 40 feet apart for street trees. <clears throat> it's just that this area is pretty wide open. So there's not many street trees along Route 9 in this area. For that's why we're trying to fix it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hobson's was always like really wide open, right. nothing in terms of landscaping. Now we're trying to bring, you've done a decent job on the architecture and on the, the landscaping and the porches. I think just having that one other tree would allow that sort of street tree effect. And it acts as a slowdown, believe it or not. And, and there have been studies done that when you put street trees close to the street, people slow down because it's sort of a natural, um, indicator that you're coming into an area where things are a little tighter and pedestrians might be around and that sort of thing. I would love to see the trees on the opposite side of the sidewalk. You can talk to the Walters or whoever at DOT. They never allow that. They, they, we did speak to them about this. Right. The sidewalk would have had to have been moved in very far. They'll do it in certain places, but won't do it other ways. You know, they'll say in 30 mile an hour zones, they'll do it, not 45 mile an hour. And this is 30, but nobody drives 30, so they will resist it. So the village board is I do too, but I, I do. Yeah, but the cops sits in the parking lot. Often enough, but, <laughs> but the village board has bought those signs that say, you know, uh, the speed limit is 30, you're doing 42. You know, they're going to be putting them up soon, right? right. Yes. So there'll be one here to tell people to slow down. But these are going to be decent sized trees, and they will act as street trees, even if they're farther back than I would like. <clears throat> We should point out that there is also additional trees along the Mill Street frontage to fill in the gaps right. so that there would be a sort of a, a landscape screenage between the houses on Mill Street and the back end of this property. Yeah, the remaining That's changes are, are just like you said, additional trees on the north side of the Mill Street entrance and along the south side. Um, and we've also added some lighting in the parking lot. Right which I know that you guys, I'm sure you'd like to discuss that tonight, because there was some concern with uh, the fact that there was no- There was no lighting in the parking lot. No, yeah, there was no pole lighting in the parking lot. Um, the original plan was to just do recessed lighting um, beneath the porch overhang. Um, so we just added two small 12 foot high pole mounted lights uh, that will be shielded um, to, and will direct all the light downward. Um, there's a, a a lighting plan show, showing the photometrics. Um, they're not exceeding the 0.1 foot candle at the property line. Um, so I'm not sure how the, the board feels about, about that. So, so no plan for any, anything solar in terms of uh, solar powering anything on the site? Not to my knowledge, no. Yeah, flat roof, right? Here I have a we won't end. No. <laughs> no, that's we're, right. We're the south facing roof. They're putting a new roof up. Won't be for long. That's something to think about. It's not, it's not south facing, though. It's, it's west facing. East west. Southwest. Oh, southwest. Southwest. It, it's enough that. Yeah. We will raise the issue, but it's not going to be part of it. I mean, we're really looking to get to the point where we can get right. this approved, so it's not required. It's so, can we set the public hearing date? As an incentive to get these um, comment letters in. Yep. Is election day Would you have all your answers by election day? Yeah, I'm actually speaking with PD and the fire department now, so that's not going to be an issue. And then DOT is just they're waiting for the email. So um, definitely before the what day? November sixth. I'll reach out to Walt, uh, Chuck tomorrow because he's had the plans for okay. a few weeks now. So, and uh, yeah, so the election is really actually next door. Um, we've had meetings during every year. Every year, right? Is that what Why break a tradition? <laughs> I have a question on the uh, garbage enclosure there. Um, 
I see the delivery model that you made, but have you considered what the garbage trucks, because right now it goes in, is there enough room for it to make a turnaround? And it, because once a garbage truck goes in, if it's not, it's going to have to go straight back to Route 9 with the beep, 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 or is there enough room there? So that when it's backing up, all garbage trucks have that, that alarm going off and, and you know, I, I'm up at 6 a.m. so I'm witnessing my garbage neighbors going beep, beep, beep at 6 a.m. But, you know, is, is, there a good, is there a good enough turnaround or does this have to be perhaps... I, if there the is. I can show he would have to do it be a multiple point turn to try to do a U-turn and get back to Route 9. I would assume that he'd, he'd probably go straight onto Mill Street and, and go north or south. Um, you know, if it's early in the morning, there's not much traffic around anywhere. But I, I could certainly show that. Um, I just don't want to have an increase in that kind of noise. And I certainly want to, wouldn't want him to go all the way back to Route 9 with that alarm going on. Yeah, no, I can't. I right, can put it like a nicer alarm. No. It's a nice music. Soothing. So I guess the parking on Mill is something we still have to... Well, the no parking on Mill. Fuck about that. That's that a no port issue. Sure. Yeah. Right. And a police issue. We'd have to make a... I'm sure the mayor and the village would want a recommendation as to what, if no parking, and how well, far... This is, on this is something that, that would fall into the jurisdiction of the police as much as anybody else in well, terms of... We could of, take um, a, a vote to recommend that the village board consider a uh, no parking from the entrance over to the uh, Route 9 exit of um, intersection of Mill Street. Just to let you know, that's really what they're going to suggest. Okay. So. All right. <clears throat> so, everybody's in favor of that? All in favor? All right. All right. <laughs> so, we'll do that. Good job. And again, we're not, we're not waiting for the village board to take that action. Right. Okay. Right. We're just making a recommendation. Yeah, it's it's something they can before it's uh, built and, and uh, open for business. There'll be time for the village board to react to that. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question, um, just procedurally. I would assume that any approvals that may or may not be given would be contingent on the health department approval. Um, we could demonstrate that after a conditional approval. I just. I hesitate to submit to the health department for final approval prior to site plan approval in case anything needs to change. Um, again, there's no, there's exi an existing septic system there. The soils are, are good. There's no reason why we wouldn't be able to get a septic system there. It's a two acre parcel. Um, so, or more than that. But yeah, the, um, the health department doesn't like to see the plans until the planning board has signed off on them. Right. Because they don't want to do it twice. Right, so. So that's what we normally do. That happens a lot. That's right. Site plan Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. So. <clears throat> you can't yeah. open without a septic system, so it's a fail-safe <laughs> mechanism in place. Yeah, I would assume that there would be no, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to sign the plans for the final approval until we demonstrate the yes. health department approval. There's no geographic restrictions or anything like that. Nope. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward application. And there's already, regarding water, there's already a, a water hookup uh, Three-quarter inch service uh, that we believe is there in the rear of the, in the building. From you, de you de dealing with David Pearson? Do you know? Uh, I think I may have called him last year about it because okay. um, I I asked him if we needed to do an RPZ. Yeah. Um, but since we're not doing any restaurant actual food preparation or anything like that, we shouldn't need to have an RPZ uh -huh. installed. Okay. So, um, but I can I can double check them. Right. You just said there's no fire hydrant. No, there's a fire hydrant on uh, Mill Street. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one other question I remembered I had. Uh, there's an existing stockade fence around the loading area now, and it says existing stockade fence to be removed. Uh, the section that's around the generator in the back there, can that be left? Yeah. Because, you know, I don't know how often you're going to run that generator. It's probably not very often, but I don't know. Maybe it's something that you, you'll do. And then, having a stockade fence around the back pen just as a way of screening it and attenuating the noise. Sure. That's not, that's not a good deal. I was showing some bollards being added to around it too, just in case there was some truck, truck traffic right. coming from the deliveries.
one tree, and me working on the space for a turnaround, leave the fence through the generator, and those were really the only um, changes to the site plan for the public hearing. And every, so we, everything will be in place and we can Yep. Okay. This is the election night. We'll have two public Big hearings. Night. <laughs> Did you guys have any comment on the lighting that was proposed as in coal maps? Yeah, it's on the last page. Yeah. 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 It's on the uh, cross side of the leading off into the field is not a problem but they're 12 foot yeah. and they're full cut off lights so. Yeah. so that's within the code so will those lights be put on some sort of timer so that they're not Yeah, we can talk to the, uh, the owner and see. Can I just the in terms of uh, uh, lessening the impact in terms of uh, the people that live across the street? Is there a specific time that? Well, I, I would have, you have you, you provided us with times of operation. Right. So it should be Off during, okay. you know, an hour before and an hour okay. after or something along those lines. That, that. So we can just, we can add a note to the plan just and, and reinforcing that. Yeah, okay. that, that would be. So in the summer, you wouldn't need the lights. <laughs> you might not, right. Right, most of the time. Right. But it doesn't, it, I don't think it makes sense for them to be on in that residential area. Um, oh, not in operation. Right. Because what, by having them on, it might then attract people to hang out there or, or whatever. That, also, um, I did have some correspondence with your attorney about the secret classification of the site, and she agreed that it's a type T secret action, so there's no environmental review required so long as the basement remains storage space. And um, Warren has provided us a floor plan showing that it's just storage space. Because it's under 5,000 square feet. Right, we'll have our here as a public hearing so we can make sure we get correct information. Anyone have any other questions for now? Set it to the public on, on the sixth. So you say. So we, we should have them by the okay. Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday before the meeting. Should these be sent as PDFs so we can look at them? Sure. It's good if we have if we have them a week before we can look at them at home so we don't come in and look at them for the first time at the meeting. Okay, so one week, Tuesday before the meeting, we'll have the PDF and other copies. And the previous plans, were, were they circulated to, to whomever that? Tony had them, yeah. and we more comments. All right. So we should have everything in place on the 6th. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank you much. Much. So we had a... Uh, I had a few miscellaneous items to talk about. Um, the village board approved forming a short term sign committee to revise the sign regulations. And John 
sent me a note and I drafted some of my concerns and just sent it out today. And um, if you, other people could comment on the things yeah. that they, their bones that they have to think about signs. I still need it. I still need it. Kind of specific examples of whatever. So we can clarify the sign code with the next one of changes we need. To <laughs> That's a sign. It's a sign. Thanks, me. Who has that sign? I do. Oh, oh. So, Wappingers. We got them in Wappingers. Oh, they do have those in Yeah, I told the board that, um, uh, actually, Tim had made the suggestion that each of the members could provide some, what I characterize as best practices. Sit up here so they can hear you on tape. Or here. Yeah, it's my first The only thing uh, we wanted to just kind of avoid the notion that it's a committee, that it was a working group. Right. So the notion was that the members of the planning board would funnel, uh, to my attention, each, as you did, David, and as John has already done, uh, suggestions, recommendations, best practices. And then I'll sit with John and, and Ryan, kind of merge them all together. I'll take responsibility for trying to, mod to, to modify the code uh, and then circulate that <clears throat> and hopefully move, move through this pretty, as quickly as possible. But, but I stress to the mayor and the village that I wasn't looking to start another committee. Right. So working <laughs> group. And the only person outside of this, this team that might be involved would be to other people. Probably we would want some input from the zoning board. Uh, I'll leave that up, up to, to you folks. Uh, and then I, I thought it might be good to have some buy-in from someone within the chamber. Yeah, just to. I was waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, that was actually John's suggestion. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Depend, depend I wish you would have told Tim that. <laughs> You should also get um, early input from Rich Olson because the Supreme Court has come up with some very strange yeah. recent rulings on local sign laws <clears throat> that yeah. make it almost impossible to uh, regulate content of any type. Right. So right. you have to make sure that you're... You can re regulate location, you can regulate size, size. Right. there are things you can regulate, but those are some of the things that David wants to regulate here. Might not be possible. Are, are probably not possible in terms of uh, legal. Yeah. David, you, 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 clarified, you, can... you clarified it. You said basically if the village is having an event, it's okay to have the signs in the village, but if Red Oaks have an event and we have the signs posted in the village of Red Oak, that was going to be an issue? It's a, it says lo the local municipalities have some rights. And you could say, we don't want a sign for the Kingston train show or uh, a fundraiser in Poughkeepsie at the Grand Hotel for something. We, don't, we, we, we just have signs everywhere like they are out on the main roads. We just really, we could say we, we only want signs universal for events in the village of Rhinebeck. And that way we at least, that doesn't impinge on, I printed out Tim's 80-page book. Races. Not even road races. I printed out you know, Tim's 80-page book from Albany. It's a lot of Supreme it's Court cases. It's not my 80-page. You know, when you found. And there's a lot of Supreme Court, this versus so-and-so against so-and-so. And, -so. and it, it's freedom of speech, and it has to be applied universally. Because we don't want a sandwich board for this category, but we will allow a sandwich board for this category. It's not something we'll be able to do. It's, you know, you have to, it's all or nothing, but, you know. You know, you know. I think one of the things that we have to be careful of is, is too strictly delineating the village from the town in terms of some events and activities. Yeah, I'm not sure you can even yeah, I, favor signs for Rhinebeck versus Red Hook or right. Kingston. Lee, right. right. in the military. I'll reach out to, to Rich. That's a good right. suggestion to give yeah. Rooker heads up. We'd have to run all of this. Even if we do it legally, I think that, that we want to be careful in terms of yeah. Rhinebeck is really one. That, that we, we don't present ourselves as being too exclusive, yeah. too controlling, David. Um, <laughs> And Rhinebeck is Rhinebeck, you know, whether it's the town or the village. The village is right. part of the town. They really right. shouldn't make so sense. So the bars tour would have been it, fine. <coughs> it's just that, you know, John is, 
in an awkward position of saying, you know, enforce the code. Right. You know, go out and be the bad guy and arrest people. Yes. And it's like, well, are they really violating the, the sign law or not? And it's very, you right. know, so, so, you know, you need something yeah. solid to say this well, or that. One of the questions that I would have is, is to what extent can we require a permit for anything that's not a political sign? I believe it's like 45 days or what have you. I know right, so, so, you know, that might, you know, looking at some of those things might help resolve some of the, some of the issues in terms of signs being proliferating all over the place. That if somebody has to get a permit to put it in, right. then at least they, they can't just, in the middle of the night, show up and right. drop some signs in. Well, I, 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 sent, walls. Right. I sent them a note to the mayor and, and John saying that they, the, the event code requires a lot of people to come to the village oh, yeah. and they have to approve all these events every right. month right. and attached to that could be signage. You know, what kind of signs you're going to have and where you're going to put it. So it's part of the approval of the event would be where these signs would go and how many of them would be. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Which would you know, and then you could have some sort of uh, list in terms of what our, our desired regulations are right. that go to people when they, you know, so that way if there's a train show, show in Kingston, you know, maybe maybe there's a fee for mm -hmm. putting up a, uh, a certain Nine. types of signs. Right. And or, if there's And no, a limitation in terms of how long they can be up. If you haven't paid a fee or a permit, it can be immediately, immediately removed. Right. Yeah, well, that has to be changed because John has it says 30 right. days. 30 days is that's got to go. So that's a definite one. That that Pete or John can remove an ill, a definitely. No, see, we never had a zoning enforcement officer who moves as fast. As <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the conditioned yeah. athlete that he is. That <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, it's, uh, Pete Dunn, Sergeant Dunn, he's he's pretty proactive with uh, the, the I believe it's the penal law where you can't have signs on. Utility poles, yeah. signs, and, and so on. Right. So he's pretty. Uh, it's always been one of Judge Payne's pet peeves. Oh, has it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, with his cooperation and assistance, it's it's a lot easier. But the, for instance, the for sale signs. Now, normally, you have to pull it after so many days of the sale. Now, now there's one out there now I know of that I'm going to want to pick up tomorrow, and with the copy of the code, and it has the address. Of the sign, and it's going to be brought to the house and say, "Well, FYI, after you have this sale, don't leave the sign out right. for a week and a half." Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, you know, we educate the public in that sense. And it's a small enough village to where I can patrol it and kind of keep on top of it. If you're here 24 seven, I am. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we permit off-premises signs? Like, you know, that's what the definition of off-premises is probably a. One, well, of, one of the big questions so, to ask, what right. does that mean? Right. You know, there's a sign in front of Michael's house, David Miller's yard sale. You know, and I, there, I'm in a prominent corner. There's always yard sales stuck yeah. in my grass for come to Knollwood, come to, come to Wine Coop, you know, Wine Coop, Wine Coop, Wine Coop, Wine Coop, thank you. Wine Coop for a yard sale. You know, why is in front of my house? And is that, is that those directional signs or, I don't know. Right. <clears throat> well, again, I think if you, if you, totally restricted the ability of people to do that. You put those signs up, you would have an outrage. Right. right. But, so but take them it's down. not unreasonable yeah. for those signs to have to be approved. You know, maybe there's a stamp that has to be on them. And if they don't have the stamp, yeah. That, no, um, I mean, we're, we're very sensitive to it. I'll, I know, that, for instance, who's having a yard sale, because a lot of them do come in and say, hey, I'm having a yard sale, and I'm going to have these signs, and this is my location. And then, so I'll know who basically came in, and we actually have them fill out a, a sign permit. We don't charge anything for it, but they fill it out, and I know that the sale is on a Friday, Saturday, and they'll be down on Sunday, but then you'll see these other ones pop up. Right, right. And for the most part, they stick the sign on my corner Friday afternoon, right. and it's gone Sunday night. The people yeah. are responsible. They really do that. But some are. Right, and, and right. what you want to do is you want to have teeth to be able to enforce it for those people who want Right. And Joey Kerfoyce has had a landscaping sign on his front yes. yard yes, for, very long for time. four months, five months now. Um, Those contract and, signs are supposed to be up only during the duration of a of the it, project. Right, and I'm not sure, he's the contract, is he the contractor? <laughs> That's, 
Yeah, he, he, is part, he is part contractor to landscaping. He, right. is, he is doing the landscaping. Right. So if, uh, if, I, if I hire an ABC landscaping company to take care of, I'm too old and I want to take care of my yes, yard, that means from May to October, they will be working on my project. Mm -hmm. That means they can leave a sign in front of my house for six months. Okay. It says, it says and can you, can you yeah. like, get ten dollars a week from them for, for providing them with right. advertising? A discount. So you know, it, it's it, there, yeah. there's a lot of a lot of a lot of nuances. <clears throat> too. Yes, a lot of you can't just say none of this. This is okay. This is not okay. It's not that easy. And, and unfortunately, the reality is we can't necessarily assume that people are going to do what's in the best interest of. So yeah, it, it, feel free to email me the things when I have a batch of I'd say you disagree ready. with Miller and this is where I will get together. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you on some of these things, but I don't think that they're, they're feasible. Yes. In some of them. It was just, it was just, it was just about it's about some of them. It's more than I got that. Yep. <laughs> so, good. Okay, now, the Coon uh, Florist parking lot. Oh, by the way, she had a, a sign yeah. out front. Yeah, you saw it too. Yeah, she had a. a oh, the pottery. Yeah. On the side. So no. D David Borstein came in. He dropped this off. He has the original. He wants a little clarification from the planning board on some um, direction with the parking lot. And once whatever we give to him tonight, he's going to finalize and have it stamped and. So with the handicapped spot over here, which is what we said is not a desirable spot, it, it doesn't restrict. John measured and it's 15 feet to the striping and like 20 feet to the tail light, the passenger tail light of that car. Is that enough room for cars to get by a handicapped person parked there? Yeah, the problem with putting it here is it makes all of this asphalt. Right. You know, to get to that spot, you, you end up having a, 90% yard was asphalt. Right. So what we had suggested that at the scale, I could do it the scale. Oh, he has yeah. that. Go ahead. Right. Is that, as I remember, this comes in like that, and then it comes over here, and you have one spot here with a walkway to the front door, and that way you provide landscaping on the site and minimize the asphalt in the back. And so you have 24 feet here, 18 feet here, wherever that turns out to be. Is that like an island? Like, in, like yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, that okay. would look a lot better. So you can have your handicap spot. It's close to the door. There's a walkway there. And then this becomes a landscaped area in front of the building. Otherwise, you're essentially creating a front yard of asphalt. And then the parking here is okay? Yeah, that's yeah. where we wanted the parking. We right. set the parking yeah. over there. Okay. Yeah, the only on the right side, not the left side. Right. And then what about the the uh, entrance or exit coming off a of nine? Is that a one way or is that a two way? It's one way in. One way in. One way in off a of nine. A two way. This two way. way. Okay. okay. So, so no exit. So it's one way in. That's right. No exit. No exit. And then here's going to be an in and an out. It's actually quite a bit. He's got one inch for, I mean, uh, for one inch it's 20 feet. Yeah. So the parking lot would be here. You know what, there's even room for like a tree. Yeah, I mean, you right could. Right in here. I thought it was most important to get the trees there. Right, though, if yeah. you've got a tree here, it would, it would help. Sure. Hide the, the parking over here from. I'll mark it up because that's how, because this is what I'm going to give him. He wants some type of species too, if you can give him some type of um, idea. Do you want evergreens? So it's, I want a coconut palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> something that's, that's uh, rain tolerant. No, something yeah, that's exactly. tolerant to that new bug. What is, is that, the, uh, yeah, the yeah. red-tailed yeah. something or other? Yeah. That's in Pennsylvania are in danger of attacking the whole country. The lantern bug. The lantern bug, yes. Yeah, with those little red wings. 
because there was an, something was going on. There was 12 cars there on Saturday, and they were lined up, like five of them here and, and seven of them here. here. Right. They parked along here and straight along here. Yes. Right. Given the choice, yeah. people are going to park closest to the door. Right. But not not this way. They were parked in a straight line, right. like well, you know, parking on the same shot. street. Yeah, right. So the handicap. Right. So are there, there, there are no power lines here, right? No, no. no. So these could be shade trees. Right. Right. That would look nice. Just put ADA where the handicap spot is. I put HA. Oh, okay. Yep. So oh, I'll, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to put, uh, you know, like Red Oaks. Red Oaks? Yeah. That's a good street tree, and that's what's being put out on the... You know, like Red Maples? Oh, those are red maples, actually. Right? Yeah. I like red oaks better, but <clears throat> maples are the root systems on them are shallow. Right, but there's no yeah. side. Right, there's no side They're right. They could put red maples, but generally speaking, uh, red oaks work better as street right. trees. I mean, you can mix them. Do half red oak and half red maple. Yeah, so do you have everything you know to, to yeah. tell them what you want? Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna put the. He's gonna put the. Um, Handicap back where it was originally, and then put the uh, walkway around there. A little bit of an island. You guys want a tree on that island, or we just focus on the, know, with the with the sidewalk there? I'm not sure there's space for a tree there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think if you put it primarily along here, right. that's okay. That does a good enough job. It won't screen there. All right. Are we Done. giving him a date to pay? <laughs> He's planning on doing it before the uh, snow. Right, so we've got to get Only this. reason I say that is to just pay 47 West. <laughs> it was originally scheduled 25, 30 years ago. <laughs> no, I know, no. It's actually the same guys that are that are uh, contracted to do. Oh, 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 oh. Um, yeah, it's right. But um, right, the last thing I had was uh, the fence, Connie's fence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have what was done in. 2015, and then what was approved May 1st, and we mentioned the board inquired about the existing fence to remain on the neighbor's side. But that's not clear which they should have talking about. But the only only side that has a fence is on the western side, and that's what I was referring to. Now it's mostly gone, except for like right, see but two it was, panels. But it was there. It was there then. Yes. Right. And so that was the fence that was supposed to be maintained. So you the side the fence, or it was her responsibility, or is it? Yes, it was her fence on the on the west side, strong side of the. So she took it down, and he would like it back. Or the right. neighbors would like it back. Right. So it because in the minutes from three years ago, it was said um, they will uh, work together <laughs> to share the expense of replacing the fence. So you're going to order them. To work together and put up a fence. <laughs> Good luck. No, I think it, it's her responsibility. It's her responsibility. She's, so, doing, she's, got, she's the one that has to satisfy a site plan. And so I don't think her argument isn't um, if or if not put up a fence. She wants to know what kind of fence. And she was leaning towards a fence that is um, prohibited in the historic district. It was like a, um, it wasn't chain link, but it was similar to it. Wire mesh. Wire, Wire mesh. mesh. Yeah. And, and the reasoning was because she wanted to plant ivy all over it. And then eventually at some point have a complete ivy, ivy screening. Wall. Ivy grows on wood fences too. So, right. So she's actually waiting to hear back from me tomorrow. She can put up a wood fence and she has to have the back of it unless she spends the money as a double sided fence. We got the neighbor friendly fence, that's what they call it. It's, it's a double sided. Yeah, it's the same price as. Not, yeah, I mean, it's, not it's a couple of dollars more. It's worth yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice. <coughs> and we've seen it. Well, what's the difference between a wire mesh and a chain link? <laughs> the wire meshes, and, and there were a lot of them in the village you know, for a long time. Typically about that high, and they typically have like curved yeah. and scallop have, tops. So and Square yeah, or yeah. right, oh, like wire a, fence as opposed to a, a like wire a, mesh, like a deer, like a deer right. fence, like something that, that, that doesn't provide any screening. Right. No, but with the thought of um, 
ivy growing all over it. And the ivy's going to deteriorate a wooden fence. Oh, she could spend the money on it. Yeah, but Connie, Connie's old enough that we're not worried about that. <laughs> right. Are That's we just going to keep saying, are we still We don't still usually film meetings. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially we're done with the meeting. Oh, yeah. We're never done. Oh, we're never done. Anybody have any other? Wait, I, I need a clarification. A wooden fence. Is that it? A yes. wooden fence? I think that's, yes. I think that's what's um, okay, so likely that's appropriate. to. It's a wooden fence. Are we talking privacy, privacy, six feet? No six more, feet. Than, no more than, than 74 inches. So it's in the but is yeah, there a front behind the front plane of the now what about um, a minimum are we are we going to allow her with a four foot fence yes, yes. Yeah, sure. okay well wait a minute the original fence was stockade that was six like, foot six. yeah actually if it's a privacy fence then so it'd be feet. four feet up to the front plane and then six, six feet, feet thereafter right technically it's 74 inches and right 50 inches or something, I can't right. Yeah, we added two inches to allow it to settle place. off the ground, but yeah. still be. And is any deviation from this, she would have to come back to the planet board for any changes? Yes. Yeah. We want a similar style of what was taken down. Or if a neighbor and her if she get back on them. good terms and come up with something else that's yes. agreeable to both of them. Yeah, we're willing to make it happen. The, the only yeah, thing that I'm just curious is, I don't. How many pools are in the historic district? Well, you got one across the street. Wasn't that Dr. Gary's mother's house? Isn't there a pool over there? It's not Dr. Gary's mother. It's his wife. It's his wife. Well, it's his wife. Mulberry. His so earlier wife. They approved one. They have a fence around it. Been there forever. Yeah, there have been a variety that have come and gone. And the vet doesn't he have a pool all the way back in this room? Is kind of thinking about a pool? No, Strong's had a pool. Oh, Strong's had a pool. I didn't know that. There's very few pools. I just have an issue when people throw rocks and live in glass houses. <laughs> I don't know. There's, I don't know. I had the conversation with him, and obviously he sent a letter to probably every board member. No? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> You're special. Special. I'm a native. All right. You all are invaders. All right. <laughs> all right. Enough said. Any other questions? Any other comments? Any other things that need clarification? We're all squared away and everything? Probably not. Right. But. Awesome. We'll see everybody on election day. Vote early and often. We'll see you, we'll see you at 7 o'clock. You need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. second it. All of very yes. nice second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Keep leaving that part out.